uh, July 12th, 2018, regular meeting of the Ann Arbor Historic Commission to order. Mrs. Thatcher, will you please call roll? Commissioner Beeson. Commissioner Cope. Here. Commissioner Epperson. Here. Commissioner Hall. Here. Commissioner Quijano. Here. Commissioner Rockland. Commissioner White. Here. You have a quorum. Thank you, Ms. Thatcher. Uh, welcome to the regular meeting of the Ann Arbor Historic Commission. I'd like to take a moment to explain the order of the meeting, specifically as it relates to the hearing of the applications on tonight's agenda. Each case will be called and we'll first hear from the staff presentation and recommendations. Following this, the commissioners who served on the review committee will present their observations and recommendations. At this point, the applicant will have an opportunity to step forward, provide any comments or additional information about the application. Once the applicant has finished, members of the public who wish to provide comments on the current case may do so, while please noting the time limit of three minutes per person. Everyone who steps forward will need to state their name aloud for the record and sign in at the sheet located at the podium and limit their comments to the application at hand. Uh, following any public comment, the applicant may be called back to the podium to review any public comments and answer any questions that the commission may have. Once all the questions have been answered, the hearing will be closed and the commission will deliberate the application, make a motion, have a discussion, and then vote. If any members of the public would like to speak to general preservation topics and not to any specific application, opportunity is provided during the audience participation participation, public commentary, following the approval of the agenda. Everyone who would like to address the commission may do so, and will be asked to state their name aloud for the record and sign in at the front podium. Thank you very much for coming this evening. Your comments are valuable to the commission. I would now like to introduce um, the commissioners. Uh, to my left, Evan Hall, uh, Jessica Keanu, uh, Robert White and Anna Epperson. <coughs> Are there any additions or changes to the agenda? Ms. No. Okay. All right. Um, hearing, seeing no objection, the agenda is approved as presented. Uh, time for audience participation. Uh, do we have any members of the public who would like to come forward and speak for the record? Okay, and Ms. Thatcher, uh, Commissioners, do we have any unfinished business to resolve? We do not. Okay, uh, being that, we'll move on to our first hearing, uh, F1-303 uh, North Division, uh, Detached Garage. Uh, Ms. Thatcher, will you please give us the staff report? The Andrew DeForest House was constructed in 1837 in the classical revival style by Mr. DeForest, who was an architect for himself. He lived here until the late 1870s, and eventually the house passed to Henry J. Brown, a prominent druggist. The Brown family lived in the house through the 1930s. During their tenure, a second story was added to the bay window, and the front entry was altered. The house was extensively restored in 1979, including the removal of asbestos siding and the restoration of the front entry. July of 2010, the HDC denied an application to replace 11 six over six wood windows on the east and south elevations. It's at the northwest corner of North Division Street and Catherine Street. The applicant is seeking HDC approval to construct a, a single car garage at the northwest corner of the site. Earlier today, I wanna to note that um, the portion of the application to install pavers on the driveway was withdrawn from this application. Um, and I'll tell you why when we get to the drawings in just a sec. So here's the house. It's lovely, it's gorgeous. It's a very prominent setting um, here in the old Fourth Ward Historic District and the Division Street Historic District. So there was a proposal for both a garage and a driveway and um, when we got out to the site we realized that that very large burr oak tree that you see there uh, between the two houses was not included on the, the, the site plan drawing. So a plan drawing was revised and um, the homeowner sent it to me this morning, but the way it was drawn, it didn't meet code for driveway width and some other things, some zoning things. So uh, he's elected to just take it out of the application for tonight. We're just looking at the garage, and um, the assumption will be that there's an existing driveway where you see the city car here parked, and um, it would only have to be extended uh, maybe 10 feet to get to the new garage, um, but I'll show you that in a second. 
here's the big tree. The driveway will have to sort of swing around it. Um, there's a piece of fence back here, picket fence, that would be taken down um, and, and reoriented uh, in a way that'll make sense in a second. Note this piece of privacy fence over here. This is the other side of that fence. Um, this is the property corner, this orange stake, and the pink stake is the proposed corner of the new garage. So the fence is, is almost six feet from um, the, the actual property line, and this is the, the neighbor's house where this green uh, car is parked um, behind their house. So a private, privacy fence would come down, and that's the general area of where the garage would go. On the other side of the fence, these are two corners of the garage. This is the front corner, and this is a little bit farther back, and um, this is a shed on the site that would be displaced. The garage then uh, has a little a little eight by eight foot wing that comes out on the side. So the long part parallel to the fence would be like a, a, the, the parking area for a vehicle and this would be extra storage here on the side. <clears throat> uh, this is just a view from North Division Street showing that fence. I think this is the shed in the distance, the fence is behind it. So that's the approximate area behind a patio where the driveway, the garage would be located. Here's the original site plan that I've included in here to show you where the garage footprint would go. Um, the tree is somewhere right around here. So at this point, we're um, not considering the new pavers in this application, as I pointed out. Um, that piece of fence that I said would be relocated, the, the gate portion would go here um, between the garage and the house. It's a, it's a pretty compact garage. It's only 12 feet wide. Um, which is certainly wide enough to get a car into, but not excessive <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination, but um, enough room for a, a car and, and some stuff over here. And the little side wing, here's the garage portion. There's a person door leading to the, the, the patio. There's um, a window on the long side, a window on the short side, and a roll-up garage door on the front. There's a cross section in there if you're interested. It would have James Hardy siding and trim um, with an exposure to match the wood siding on the house. It's very simple. Um, let's see, the door. Uh, let, me, let me get to that in the staff uh, report in a minute. It has a hipped roof, which is interesting because it really keeps the massing to a minimum. It really tones down um, the garage by not putting out a steep gable on there in order to store kayaks or whatever. Um, it, it, it helps to um, keep it deferential to the main house. Here's the front. It's a roll-up door. It's, you know, sort of an old-fashioned style, but it's fine because it is a roll-up door. Um, nobody's going to um, confuse anything on this garage for a historic structure, I don't think. Uh, the window materials aren't specified. It's a garage. I don't really care if they're wood or clad or vinyl. Um, because again, this is a modern building. Um, it does have vinyl louvered shutters. Um, not crazy about vinyl shutters. Definitely not on a historic structure, but this is not a historic structure. This is a structure to be built in 2018, so I really don't object to um, shutters. They're, they're very small. It's, they're only on two windows, and one of the most prominent features of this house is its shutters, so it makes sense to sort of play off that a little bit. This is the... The, the back or the north elevation. Um, I have in the staff notes that a zoning re review will be required. We've already done that preliminarily. Um, when that comes in for pit permits, the zoning coordinator will take another look at it, but everything appears to be just fine. Since it's located pretty close to the property lines, there would be firewalls. Um, on these two sides. You have to be five feet off the property line to um, avoid the, f the f need for a firewall, and this is three, so that's just fine. Um, that's a one-foot EVO overhang, and then two more feet to the side. Same on the rear. So the Secretary of Interior's standards that best apply are number two, which says the historic character of a property will be retained and preserved, the removal of distinctive materials or alteration of feature spaces and spatial relationships that characterize a property will be avoided. Number nine says that new additions, exterior alterations, or related new construction 
shall not destroy historic materials that characterize the property. The new work shall be differentiated from the old and shall be compatible with the massing size, scale, and architectural features to protect the historic integrity of the property and its environment. Number 10 says that new additions and adjacent or related new construction will be undertaken in such a manner that if removed in the future, the essential form and integrity of the historic property will be unimpaired. From the Secretary of the Interior's guidelines for building site, recommended is designing new exterior additions to historic buildings or adjacent new construction, which is compatible with the historic character of the site and which preserve the historic relationship between the building or buildings, landscape features, and open space. Not recommended is introducing new construction, which is visually incompatible in terms of size, scale, design, materials, color, or texture, or which destroy historic relationships. From the Ann Arbor Historic District Design Guidelines for Residential Accessory Structures, not appropriate is introducing new structures or site features that are out of scale with the property or the district or are otherwise inappropriate. So, um, <clears throat> um, staff recommends approval of the application as amended today. The proposed garage is appropriately sized, does not detract from the historic house, and the design and materials are compatible with the historic house and neighboring historic structures. Also note that the garage, um, that hip roof, uh, looks just like the house when you see it from across the street. You've got to be a little bit farther back, but it also has a hip. So staff does recommend approval of this application. Thank you. <clears throat> and I would, I would note that when a, when a commissioner proposes a motion to please be sure that you only include the language, language about a garage and not language about a paver driveway. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Thatcher. Uh, Commissioners Epperson and Keanu, we're on the review committee. Will you please give us your report and recommendations? Okay, I'll go first. Um, okay. yeah, I, I agree with staff that the, the garage itself is appropriately sized, scaled, massing. I think it, it's well cited, cited as far as terms as where it is located on the property. Um, you'll see parts of it from the street or get little glimpses of it as you drive by or walk by. but. As staff indicated, I think it complements the house very well. Um, we spent a lot of time discussing the, the driveway and the location of that the tree. Um, so I think I'd have some more questions, I guess, about just the overall, whether or not that tree is still a concern, regardless of whether or not we're looking at the driveway right now. Um, I, I agree with both the staff report and the comments made by Commissioner Epperson, um, the, the proposed design for the garage meets and is in compliant with the, the guidelines and standards um, that were identified. Um, and the, the location uh, is probably the most, the most appropriate, not only for the approach, but for the significant uh, views of the property um, that being the corner of Division and Catherine. Mm -hmm. uh, you couldn't see it at all in that first photo of the house, and you really would only catch a, a peak of it as you're going down Division. So um, I would be in support of that. All right. Thank you, Commissioners. Uh, would the applicant please come forward, uh, provide your name for the record, and please sign in? <coughs> the, the builder is OK. I'm Jake LePan with Fireside Home Construction on a representation for Steve and Kim Hoodlin. Um, do you have anything to add to the staff report or review committee reports? Uh, I agree that the structure complements the area nicely. It's very compatible with the existing design and it is not trying to falsely represent a uh, historic structure. So, you know. I feel it fits in with what we're trying to do. And to further conversation with the, the driveway, we are planning on just leaving everything as is, as how it is now, and not uh, trying to cause any further issues with the tree or the root systems or anything in there. We're going to be very careful during the construction phase to make sure we protect that tree also. So, do you have any questions for me about the actual garage structure or anything? Commissioner? I don't really. It seems like a pretty straightforward project. I appreciate okay. it. I can finish filling this out and then. Um, 
Moving on to the public hearing, are, are there any members of the public who would like to speak on this agenda item? Um, and again, remember to sign in and limit your time to three minutes. Okay. Uh, commissioners, do you have any additional questions? Um, I'll now close the public hearing portion of the application. Um, Maybe seated, thank you. Uh, would any commissioners like to make a motion on this application? I'll, I'll read that. Um, I move that the commission issue a certificate of appropriateness for the application at 303 North Division Street, a contributing property in the old Fourth Ward Historic District, to construct a single story garage on the following conditions that the windows and door feature true divided lights or applied exterior muttons or no muttons at all. The work is conditioned, uh, is compatible in exterior design, arrangement, materials, and relationship to the house and the surrounding area and meets the Secretary of the Interior Standards uh, for Rehabilitation and Guidelines for Rehabilitating Historic Buildings, in particular standards 2, 9, and 10, and the guidelines for building site, as well as the Ann Arbor Historic District Design Guidelines particularly as they pertain to residential accessory structures. Uh, Support. Should, oh, <laughs> should we note about the... The motion the, doesn't mention the... Um, yeah, there's no mention of um, <coughs> driveway. Got um, I'd suggest you'd insert on the very first line, I move that the yeah. commission issue a certificate of appropriateness for the amended application. That should take care of it. Okay, uh, I move I move that the commission issue a certificate of appropriateness for the amended application at 303 North Division Street. Great, thank you. Etc. Support uh, moved by Commissioner White. Uh, is there any discussion on the motion? Sorry, seconded by Mr. White. <laughs> Is there any discussion on the motion? Um, all, I guess we'll take it to a vote. All those in favor, please say yes. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Uh, the motion does carry. Your application has been approved and you will receive written notice from staff. Please note that you must apply for any required permits from the city before beginning on your project. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, on to hearing F2, uh, 112, 114 West Liberty, uh, replacement of numerous windows and roof deck. Uh, Ms. Thatcher, your staff report, please. 112 and 114 East Liberty were built in 1866. First occupants were Charles Binder's Saloon at 112, which is the one on the right next to the alley, and Gottlob Laubengeyer, purveyor of agricultural implements in 114. The building's a three-story brick Italianate with four over four windows with round and segmented arches on the front. Sites located on the north side of West Liberty between South Main and South Ashley, and the current tenants are the Alley Bar and Pacific Rim. Um, the applicant is seeking many items. I think that I even may have missed one on the on the, the, the list of, uh, on the front page here of the staff report. Um, in a nutshell, their request is to replace six modern windows on the front of 114, restore two contributing front windows, replace six contributing front windows on the front of 112, replace nine contributing windows on the alley side of 112, replace four windows on the rear elevation and install a new transom above the center front door. And I should add there also to replace that center front door. To remove a non-original storefront trim band and repair the underlying bricks or install a new cast stone trim band if staff determines that the bricks cannot be repaired. And to tuck point and repair bricks damaged by trucks on the southeast corner of the building, that corner going into the alley right here is just a, a target for large trucks that are trying to turn in and they don't make the corner. Uh, to construct a new rooftop stair enclosure and deck and install three new mechanical rooftop units to install 10 steel bollards along the east elevation of the building in the alley and to replace a, non, a steel non-original door with a matching door on the rear elevation. Uh, since this is an, an, uh, a window application, 
Um, when we get to that part of the report, I have uh, window survey sheets, one for each window, if anyone is interested in looking at those. I'm going to go through and not make a whole lot of comments, but if you see anything uh, that you want me to elaborate on, I'm happy to do that, or I can look it up in the, the surveys that the review committee and I took on Monday. So if you, if you look down this photo right here, there's a bollard right here at the corner, and there's another one way down at the end of the building. Um, I don't think I have another photo that shows the entire alley, so uh, probably one of the smallest parts of this application is to install a row of bollards along the wall here. Uh, I think that that would be great because it would protect the historic building from trucks running into it. Uh, I don't think it's up to the Historic District Commission to, to grant the ability to do that. <laughs> But if you're okay with it, then uh, the applicants could take it farther to other city departments or the Downtown Development Authority, depending on who has jurisdiction over the alley, uh, because I'm pretty sure that that's all public right of way right up to the building. If they determine that they own a foot of property or something into the alley, that's a little different, but um, that all remains to be determined. But I have no <coughs> objection uh, to bollards along the alley. Here's a photo from 2007. I included it in here because it shows the whole block quite well. These two buildings are the application. It's the seven windows across the front. Uh, they were built first in uh, 18, 1866, and then this building was added on, which matches it almost exactly, and then this building, and I think these two at the end were, were built simultaneously. Um, but the whole thing within a span of a couple of years. I'm gonna start going through the windows first. When the review committee went through, this was the scheme that we used to identify each window. Uh, on 112, the upper floor windows are D, 123, and then E, 123, on the second floor. The two C windows are in the center, and then A's and B's are on 114 East Liberty, which is the left, West Liberty, which is the left-hand building. Um, so the first part, window A, uh, which is up here on 114, uh, it has inappropriate infill and it has modern windows on this top row. These photos are from the application. Uh, there are lots more photos and more details in the application. I didn't put them all in here because this is already an exhaustive length of uh, PowerPoint, so be sure to ask if you can't find something and we'll help you navigate to it. Uh, but these are new windows. They're modern replacements on the third floor of 114. Uh, the proposal is to replace them with uh, replica of the windows on 112 on the third floor, which is completely appropriate. Um, you can see that these don't fit in the opening and they've got these falsehood things and um, they're just all around disproportionate. This is an example from the inside. You can see how modern it is. And it only has uh, the little snap-on buttons on the outside. Uh, moving on to window B, which is the second floor, the middle band of windows on 114. These windows, it turns out, have original top sashes, uh, which you can't really tell that well from the photographs, although, um, and, and the bottom sashes are strange four over four that are obviously replacements from some point in time. It's possible that these were replaced before 1945, um, but it would be more appropriate to go back to the sashes like window bank E on 112, which would match the top sash. They, they, they look very awkward and out of place there. Uh, you can also see that there's uh, a little wood infill here. That was just to accommodate a screen or a storm on the outside. Uh, here's what that looks like. This is the original top sash. The, the arch top is still there, and this is that, that piece of wood on the outside that was added on just to accommodate screens or storms. So that's, that's an easy thing to reverse. These are the four over four bottom sashes that are not the original design. And then um, this is window B1, which is the one closest to the, uh, uh, to the west. Um, I've included another picture of each. I have additional photos if anyone needs to see them for reference. Um, generally, <coughs> Almost all of the sills on these windows that we're going through have some cracks. Some of them have some significant cracks. Um, a few of the sashes have rotten or missing pieces. Generally, they're pretty sound windows. Um, 
I will, I will preface this whole thing by saying that there was not an entire window that I believe would meet the standards for replacement, which is that they have to be deteriorated beyond repair. Um, so let's go through the rest of these. B2, um, this, was a, this was a pretty good looking window. There was no significant um, damage even to the sill here. B3, not sure what that stick was accomplishing. Um, just gave you a little close up so you could see the arch top. Uh, all of them need repairs, definitely. I'm not saying that they don't need some repairs, but uh, most of them need some glazing putty. All of them need new paint on the exterior pretty badly. All of them, need, except maybe one or two, need their sills uh, stabilized um, if, uh, or at least painted. This is one of the window C's that are in the center of the building above the center door. Um, the one on the third floor we could get up to and, and look at pretty closely, and it's one of the most deteriorated windows on the whole structure, um, but it is proposed to be repaired. Windows D are on, uh, on the right side on 112 on the third floor, and they, these are also original windows. Um, this is them from the inside. This is that C window that's a little bit narrower down the center. And then we have D1 here, D2, D3. Um, they were in remarkably good condition. A few problems. You can see how this one at the top, I think I've got a close-up of it. Um, this one, D1, had a slightly mismatched um, lower rail here. It seems like maybe it was replaced. It's got a screw in it here. I'm not sure why. This, this dimension didn't match exactly the other ones. Looks like somebody just repaired it at some point. Um, this is the one in the center. This is D2. You can see how this is a little bit crooked up here. This, this <coughs> sash is sagging down a little bit. Um, needs to be propped back up. It wasn't uh, serious damage. The windows E are on 112 on the on the second floor. Uh, these are also original windows. Here they are, uh, E1, 2, and 3. E1 has a missing lower sash. This is a piece of plexiglass. You can see how it's just screwed into the top sash here. So this one certainly needs a uh, replacement sash on the lower half. E2. E2 was a, I believe E2 was the one where, it doesn't look like it here, but one of them had a center, um, a center mutton, center style, whatever you would call this, uh, that was a little bit narrower on the lower sash than the upper sash. And we figured out later that they probably came, it probably was a replacement from a different window on the building, because elsewhere on the window, um, elsewhere on the building, there were <laughs> sashes like this. Moving on to the east elevation along the alley. These are numbered one through nine. One through six are on the second floor. Seven, eight, nine are on the third floor. And note on the building here that this is a partial third floor. It steps down here and then goes back farther. So these are those windows from the alley on the outside. Um, the, the, the street is to the left here. <coughs> um, this is windows one, two, three and four and five six seven or I think I got one too many one two three four five six and seven eight nine are up on the top these windows also were in relatively good shape a few of the um, the brick sills needed some work and that's true on the well the, the front elevation has a stone sill which was in better shape but different areas on this side alley elevation had different amounts of deterioration of these brick sills see some of that in a sec. So these are six over six windows held up by pins. These were replaced at some point? Or? No, I don't believe that these were replaced. I believe that these are original windows. These different windows or at least pre-1945. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, which, which would be pretty common. Yeah. I mean, the front was the prominent elevation. This is the more utilitarian. But they're still, um, they're still very elegant windows. They have very thin muttons. Um, you can tell that the workmanship is older. Um, a couple of them don't match the others exactly because this bottom rail here has a channel 
cut into it. That's like where you put your fingers to raise the sash up, which is kind of cool. A couple of those were missing that, so there may have been some work done on these windows previously. Uh, you can see here on the wood sills, almost all of them had cracks. You can see cracks like this. And, but then you can see where the brick sill um, definitely needs some work. A lot of the mortars gone in the joints. That could use some stabilization. Some were in better condition than others. This is one of the worser, this is F3, of the, um, the wooden sills. F4. Um, this one was in relatively good condition. The bricks could use some work. All of them need paint on the outside. F5, F6, F7, this one had one of the worser sills also, F8, this one had um, some of the wood trim, the sill just, or the stool just sawed off here. Um, almost all of the parting stops and the and this um, almost all of the stops have been replaced at some point, which is appropriate. That you're supposed to do that, um, but there has not been a lot of maintenance done on these windows. We did not try to raise any of them, um, so I don't know if they function though. They all had locks, and uh, the meeting rails met relatively well in all but a couple of these windows, so they were mostly square and closable. Moving to the back elevation, we have windows H, which are a pair, G, which is two windows in one very large opening, and H2. This is a view of the back alley. So these are the windows H. I think I called them A and B. This is the large window. It's, it's sitting on this, this, this beam, this steel beam here. And the area below has a lot of work done to it, some CMU infill. And then this is window H2. I do believe that all of these windows are also from the period of significance, uh, and that should be pretty apparent from the photos. These windows uh, are similar to the six over sixes on the alley side elevation. This is HA and HB. They were both in relatively good condition. The sills looked a little better back here in the alley. I think it's a little bit more protected. Window G looks pretty bad from the outside, um, but when you take a look from the inside and kind of pick the pieces apart, this is one of the cooler windows that I've ever seen on a historic downtown building. It's definitely the biggest single hung window I've ever seen. This piece of wood here is just a two by four that's a frame that's holding in storms or screens on these windows. Um, it's, it's, it's hiding uh, the, the very thin uh, mutton that, um, it, that exists behind it. This sash obviously um, has been blown out for mechanical equipment venting. So this lower sash is, the frame may be there, but, but it would need to be replaced. Here are those windows from the inside. Again, it doesn't do it justice because there's a giant heating unit thing with these big pipes going up through the ceiling um, that we were told would be removed as part of the renovation. And this is the lower sash. It's got a bunch of crud in there between the, the window and the storm. Again, nobody's bothered to clean it out for a very long time. This is the upper sash, it's, and, and this is the lower sash. These, these photos really don't do it justice. Um, like standing next to it, my head would be barely above the, the, the meeting rail here. These are just massive, um, f from the ceiling almost to the floor. And like I said, I haven't seen commercial windows, uh, windows on a commercial building this large before in a two over two pattern, so it's pretty unique. And this is that lower right hand sash where the vent comes out. Uh, last window on the back is H2. This one, you can see on the outside that the upper sash frame, part of it remains. The lower sash is intact, but it's had some kind of particle board or something um, probably glued onto the frame and the glass has all gone behind it. So that would be another one where a replacement sash would be in order. This one has a weird pipe that was drilled through the sill um, for some sort of drainage or something, which is also inappropriate, but um, uh, certainly reversible. On the, the, I'm sorry, this should say third floor rear windows, not second floor. On the third floor in the back, there, there's this window which is operable um, on the 
east end, and then these are on the west side. Um, no glazing in these. This is just a two by four window. There's nothing old or historic about it, though the opening looks like it's been there for a while. But these are proposed to be infilled. You can't see them from anywhere. I had no idea that they even existed until we went up into the third floor. Um, and they're proposed to be uh, sided over from the exterior. Um, I do not know if they would be infilled first or not. That's something that we should talk to the architect about when it's his chance to talk. Moving on to the center front door and transom. Um, in a minute, I'll show you a historic photo that shows there used to be a lovely uh, four light transom window up here. They're proposing to replace that, which would be great for that stairwell, get some light in there. This is an old door. It may be from the period of significance, but it's not the original door, which has a different uh, raised panel pattern. Uh, the proposal is to replace this door with one that matches the original. I think that that's appropriate given that this door is in pretty bad shape. Um, it's still usable uh, and the only way that I would uh, recommend removing it and replacing it would be with a replica of the original door which would work really nicely with a new transom up there. Uh, some of this stuff is proposed to be taken off. It's not a formal part of the application, but some of these wood um, decorative features and menu boards and things like that to clean up the front of the building. Um, that can be done at any time without HTC approval. Next, we move on to the storefront trim band. There's a, there's a, a little, uh, I don't even know what you'd call this. It's, 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 not a, it's not a gutter guard. It's just a piece of trim, almost a first floor cornice that runs the whole length of this block. But there's nothing original about the one on 112 and 114. It's very simple, it's just painted wood. It's got this, this, this little, little hood on it. Um, here it is on 114, same thing. You can see that as you keep going, this 116 has a modern one that's um, obviously not historic and 118 and 120 are the same way. So that's proposed to be taken off and the brick restored underneath, or if it's not uh, restorable, meaning basically if the, if the brick is missing and can't be repaired, they would like to install just a simple stone band. This would still be complementary with the other non-original trim running down the building. Um, and if you look at this photo of Charles Binder's uh, delivery wagon, um, mostly I like to look at the beer and the horses. <laughs> so I zoomed in to cut them out because they're a distraction for me. And this is what the storefront used to look like. Here's that very cool um, four light transom window. And here's the original door. You can see that it had two long panels on the top. The door right now has uh, little panels and then big panels and then horizontal panels. So we still need a little more information on what the rest of the door looks like, but from this we know that the door that's there now is not the original window, uh, original door. Here you can see that there was just a brick trim band here. This is an enormous sign underneath the awning, which probably says Charles Binder Saloon, I'm guessing. Um, but if you go up a little bit more, you can see that there's a soldier course of bricks here. There's, this is a raised trim band that extends to the corner. Right now you can't see this because it, um, because the wooden trim goes all the way up to these window sills on the second floor. So when they take that off, that may be what they'll find under there. And um, if they uh, put that all back together and fix the bricks under there, that it, this would certainly be an appropriate place for a sign. It's going to be limited height, and I'm not sure I'd want it quite that wide, but um, that is how it looked historically. So here's a drawing of what the stone trim would look like on the front of the building. There's a detail showing a simple profile with a little cap on the top, little drip edge. Um, and now we're going to move on to discussion of the roof deck. Here's the front elevation throwing, showing a new stair enclosure and new guardrails. This is a little deceiving because this is far enough back on the building that you won't actually be able to see it. On the back of the building, this is that two-story rear portion of the building, and then we go to the three-story front portion. So the stair tower will actually have to um, step up. So stairs will come up, and then stairs will come up the rest of the way to get you onto the roof. So there are, there are two flights of stairs <coughs> with a landing um, inside of here. Um, you can see where it is. It's, it's, it's set back almost 
to the center of the building where the third story ends. And pretty simple guardrail here. It is set back, I believe it's five or six feet from the front parapet. Um, and there is a parapet on this building. Here's an aerial photo from 2015, and this is our building. This is 112 and 114. It's um, pretty much a blank slate up there. It's got some mechanical equipment, but not a ton. If you look next door at 116, this is a little roof uh, addition and roof deck that was constructed around 2007. And it's got window bank back here. Um, by comparison, I'm going to have to, sorry about this, I'm going to have to go all the way back up to the first slide. Should have pointed this out the first time. If you're standing across the street in the alley, here's what you can see of the neighbor's stair enclosure. Uh, you have to really look for that. And this was, the, this was the angle from which you could see the most of that. This building's stair enclosure is going to be back like another 15 feet. Um, and I really, it, and it's right in the center of two buildings, not centered on one bay, but centered on two bays. Really don't think you're going to be able to see any of this. Um, even from the rear alley because of the way uh, the tall buildings behind it are situated. <clears throat> okay, here's a roof drawing. So here's the new stair enclosure. And I take it back. If you're standing in the alley, you might see the top of this, but it's really going to be um, nothing that's going to draw any attention to itself. The roof deck works around some, some new rooftop units. This is set back adequately that you shouldn't ever be able to see from across the street any of the new work on the roof. There's the street section over the parapet, over the guardrail, over the top of the stair enclosure. Uh, cross section showing those stairs going up. All right. Before I read the standards, let me run through my notes and make sure I didn't miss something. All right, so <clears throat> um, just as a note, window worksheets were filled out for all the windows proposed for replacement. And um, it indicated that all dimensions would match exactly, which indicates to me custom built wood windows uh, but then there were several profiles of Marvin Cladwood windows attached at the end of the application, but they're not referenced on the window worksheets. Um, that's kind of a moot point for me, uh, since I believe it's not appropriate to replace any of these windows wholesale, so I don't know that that will come into play. There, uh, there is a f uh, information in the footnotes of attachment HTC 5 that indicates that single pane glass will be replaced with double paned. Um, after looking at these windows, the, 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 the muttons are all very thin. It would not be possible to retrofit the existing sashes with insulated glass because there's just no place to put it. So the appropriate thing to do would be to put a storm on the exterior or a storm on the interior to get that second um, pane for thermal efficiency. Um, in the, in the, the proposed motion that you are free to stick to or deviate from, I passed out a new one today. Um, after the review committee visit, I, I um, had a better understanding of what was going on in the building. And uh, it has a couple of conditions. One of them is um, that staff or staff and a commissioner, if I'm not comfortable doing it on my own, take a look at that brick band. Um, before a stone band is allowed to be installed on the front of the building. Um, on the roof deck, um, really staff finds all of that appropriate. I think it's a great use of a, of a roof. I've already covered the bollards. Oh, in the rear door, there's, there's a steel modern rear, rear door with no windows on it at all. Totally appropriate to replace it with another modern steel door. So. Um, 
Moving on to the Secretary of Interior standards, number <coughs> one says that a property will be used as it was historically or be given a new use that requires minimal change to its distinctive materials, features, spaces, and spatial relationships. I read number two to you already. Number five says distinctive materials, features, finishes, and construction techniques or examples of craftsmanship that characterize a property will be preserved. Number six, um, which is uh, the one that applies best to the windows here, deteriorated historic features will be repaired rather than replaced. Where the severity of deterioration requires replacement of a distinctive feature, the new feature will match the old in design, color, texture, and where possible materials. Replacement of missing features will be substantiated by documentary and physical evidence. Number nine I read to you, and number 10 says that new additions or adjacent or related new construction will be undertaken in such a manner that if removed in the future, the essential form and integrity of the historic property will be unimpaired. I pulled out some of the Secretary of Interior's guidelines uh, and some of the Ann Arbor Historic District Design Guides. There are lots more in the staff report. I'm just going to hit some of the highlights here. From the Secretary of the Interior on windows, recommended is identifying, retaining, and preserving windows and their functional and decorative features that are important in defining the overall historic character of the building. Such features can include frames, sash, muttons, glazing, sills, heads, hood molds, paneled or decorated jams, and molding, and interior and exterior shutters or blinds. Also recommended is making windows weather tight by recaulking and replacing or installing weather stripping. These actions also improve thermal efficiency. Also recommended is repairing window frames and sash by patching, splicing, consolidating, or otherwise reinforcing. Such repair may also include replacement in kind of those parts that are either extensively deteriorated or are missing when there are surviving prototypes. Not recommended is retrofitting or replacing windows rather than maintaining the sash frame and glazing or replacing an entire window when repair of materials and limited replacement of deteriorated or missing parts are appropriate. For alterations or additions for the new use, recommended is designing additions to roofs, such as residential office or storage spaces, elevator housing, decks and terraces, dormers or skylights, when required by the new use so that they are inconspicuous from the public right of way and do not damage or obscure character defining features. From the Secretary of Interior's guidelines for roofs, not recommended is introducing a new roof feature that is incompatible in size, scale, material, and color. Moving on to the Ann Arbor Historic District Design Guidelines for windows. It's appropriate to retain and maintain windows in good condition. Normal maintenance will include cleaning, sash guard replacement, limited paint removal, recaulking where necessary, and new paint to make full windows fully operable. Also appropriate is repairing windows in somewhat good condition by installing some new wood pieces or laying epoxy into sills, jam, or sash. Deteriorated parts such as stops and sash cords should be replaced. Also appropriate is replacing seriously deteriorated components that cannot be repaired with like material, identical layout, mutton size, glass area, and style size of the original. Insulated glass is permitted when sash replacement is permitted using interior and exterior muttons with a spacer bar that replicates the original window. Not appropriate is failing to maintain and repair existing windows. All right. Okay. So, um, uh, the, the way that the, the, the staff suggested motion is laid out is there's a laundry list of items that are recommended for approval in the first motion and there's a second motion um, uh, with a recommendation of denying um, three items that were on the original application. That's it. Thank you. All right. Um, uh, Commissioners Epperson and Keanu, we're on the review committee. Uh, will you please give us your report and recommendation? Uh, sure. Uh, uh, Ms. Thatcher gave a, a great summary of our findings. Um, without certainly, if, if others have questions, we can go one by one. But um, the general uh, consensus going through the buildings, the windows were in relatively fair condition considering their age. Um, you know, we kind of poked and prodded around. I not notice nor did others notice um, any real rot or anything in the in the wood sashes or frames uh, the most deterioration we saw were the few exterior wood sills um, that were noted in the presentation um, they certainly need paint and 
some attention, uh, but they are not, I would say, beyond repair. Um, I do have some questions, just uh, some of the units that would probably be viewed as repairable, yet they are not on what may be a primary facade. Um, just questions on how the commission feels on that. Um, and let's see, the, the wood trim band uh, and the brickwork found beneath that. Um, I, I did have questions of how that would be determined, um, you know, we, whether the brickwork was beyond repair and whether the, the stone would be then uh, put in place. Couldn't see much of it. All we could see was at the very end on the alley side, um, some wood framing members that this cornice is uh, attached to was visible. So there's definitely something going on under there. Um, but seeing in the, the proposed motion that s staff would then have to determine that, um, I'm comfortable with that. Um, the roof deck and enclosure and the other elements up there, again, unless you're far down the alley across the street, you, we couldn't see anything, uh, any evidence of any neighboring um, struct rooftop structures. And with this being set back, I'm, I don't have any concerns there. Um, the bollards, again, make, make sense, and uh, we see how the other departments view that. Um, and again, the, the rear door would be replaced in kind, so there's no issue with that. Um, Commissioner Epperson. Yeah, thank you, Commissioner Quijano. Um, I agree with staff's findings and with the statements that Commissioner Quijano has, has stated. Um, I don't have a whole lot more to add. I think the again that the report was, the summary was great. Um, I agree that the the windows themselves are in fairly good condition and um, with the that repair on majority of them is is um, very feasible especially because there are there's a, a large number of existing components that if there are pieces that need to be replaced or repaired in full there's replicas available there on site um, the rest of the work I think as Com Commissioner Keanu stated is I have some had some similar questions about the stone band um, but I think the rooftop addition is fine and the rest of the work I think is appropriate Okay, thank you. <clears throat> um, Would the applicant please come forward and provide your name for the record and please sign in. Chris Biggers, the architect, uh, representing Magda Gulvison. Do you have anything to add to the report? Yeah, yeah the, um, I mean, the biggest, the windows have been a big, big contention with the, with the owner on this. She inherited multiple buildings in the downtown, so there are some of them are on Main Street, and this one happens to be in the historic district, so, and has a lot of windows <laughs> mm. compared, so it's, it's very daunting, you know, it was daunting for her to, to realize she has to restore a lot of these windows. Um, some of the concerns she has is like, uh, she wants to lease these as, as residential units and some of our other units the tenants will beat up the windows, so she's very concerned. Repairing these, is this gonna be continuously repaired after each tenant moves out? And, you know, so ideally she would love to replace them all with replicas if she could. Um, that would be her ideal situation. Um, we even wondered if could we replace the sides and rear and restore all the, all the uh, front facade windows, um, so, Ideally, she'd love to re replace them all, but if we have to repair them, then that's that's what she's gonna have to do at this point because we almost have our permit going. Um, but she's very concerned about get them getting beat up in long term. She's gonna have to repair them year after year because the tenants probably aren't gonna care about the windows as much as, as everyone else. Um, yeah, I mean, that's just her concern. It's not maybe not one window to tear it all the way, but each window needs some type of different repair and they're not all the same, so. Um, 
I had a question about G, did, the window G. Did, if we really think that's an original window, at some point that window was pulled out for the sole purpose to get that that rooftop unit in, and then they cut some big opening below it. So that was a question we have: Is that really a you know we'd like to replace that window if possible? Um, if that would be a replace a replace, not a repair, because um, at some point it was pulled out just for that unit, and then we're going to pull it out again to get the unit out. So that is a big question we had about G. Um, and I think you answered the about on, you already touched on the B windows, the lower sashes of the B replacing those with the, the different grills, or different sashes to match the grills. Um, And one more, th one more comment on the um, roof. If you go to the front facade of the roof, um, the roof stair enclosure. The, yep. The um, building departments mentioned they need to, we're gonna be required to put a restroom up there. So we were wondering if it part of this approval, we would extend that, um, the, the roof doghouse left about seven, eight feet so we can get a restroom inside that that enclosure at the very top. That we, we push it to the left so it's not going towards the alley, it'd okay. go away from the alley. That should give us enough room to, to include a restroom up in that. And the restroom would actually sit on the lower roof, but we just want to, we didn't want the whole roof enclosure to look the same. Oh, I see. Yeah, so it'd be on that level with that door next to that door, and it'd be accessed from the inside. So there'd be no exterior door to the restroom. Could you put it on the second floor roof and not extend it up to the third floor? Um, to, I guess if you see that picture, we would pull the wall to the right, extend the whole, whole thing to the right mm -hmm. of that door, the new door about seven, eight feet, that should give us enough room for a restroom and a door inside the, the stair access. So we'll set, the, we'll set it on the, second, on the second floor roof, not on the third floor roof. And do you know why they're requiring you to put a It's a restroom requirement a for closure? patios on the roof. We haven't run into that before. <laughs> well, that's what they, they have hit us with in the plan review as during this process. So. They, they, we were forced to put one on Foundry, the Foundry building. They wanted one up there, and mm -hmm. they seem to be it, we're trying to push back on that. But Chris, is it because there's a room up here on the third floor? Is there, or is this all stair? That that building, the new addition building, is only for the sole purpose to enclose the stairs. Okay. And access the third floor, the patio. Sorry. Okay. And the roof access in the rear. I'm a bit confused. <laughs> I don't know if this is the time to ask the question. Well, yeah, let's, let's, let's yeah. wait. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry, I guess. I mean, other than that, we, the, the band issue, we're just concerned that when we pull the band out, that it was probably not installed very well, so we're not sure what damage occurred in that meantime, and replacement with new brick would not be look right at all if we have to replace it. All right, um, commissioners, do you have any questions for the applicant? Yes. Mr. I don't know, it's not necessarily a question, but it's a sort of comment. Uh, I'm wondering if it would help alleviate some of the owner's uh, concerns about the interiors of the windows if you put an interior storm on the interior side. That, I'm sure maybe you've probably thought of that. That's I the direction that we, uh, that I, I'm, pushing to go. I don't yeah. think we, I don't think she wants the exterior storms either. Yeah. You know, again, we need the con energy's concern too, so. Sure, no. Yeah, obviously. we were discussing with her just to put the interior and protect sash her, and have it over the concern, windows to yeah. keep them from being touched. <laughs> um, to, I don't want to. No, that was it. Uh, to touch upon the, those comments, again, her, 
The owner's concerns about having to continuously maintain the windows. It may, you know, who's to say it's year by year, but I think that that is part of owning a historic property and whether this fell in her lap or not, uh, that's, that's almost a given, yeah. uh, whether it was a new property or not, also just maintenance. Um, and it's the role of the commission to not only protect the building itself, uh, you know, thinking for the property owner, it's protecting the value of the property to be able to restore those windows and have them be appropriate, um, but then also to protect the interests of the surrounding community that these tenants are moving into. So that um, you know, maybe that's something to discuss with the property owner. Um, uh, I have other questions, but they're on different topics. So I don't know if others mm -hmm. want to talk about the windows. Questions? I had a question about the stone banding, so I don't um, just briefly, I know that it's it's undecided yet, um, but or as of now, it's shown in the rendering that it's going right up to on the underside of the windowsill. Um, is that intentional? Is that just a view in the rendering? I know the section that's actually shown on screen here doesn't really show where the sill is. I ask that because it, typically there's a gap. It would just go below the the sill. So you're you're proposing that it would be butted right up to the underside of the yeah, sill. Yeah, of the sill. Not of not at the sill below it. So, so see the yeah, about two bricks. Because that I'm just down. looking at the original yeah. coursing. There's yeah. below the window stone window sill, there's approximately probably two rows of flush face bricks and then the the corner spanning stuff. Yeah, we would ideally try to leave two okay. two courses. Any other questions, Commissioners? Um, well, I guess for the concern about the stone band being installed, it's still conditional on some more review by staff, yeah. at least. So we'll once hear you about a, that. Once you get a good look at it. Before. Yeah. Um, I mean, there, there have been good examples around town, I would believe, about stone repair and tuck pointing and replacement um, finding compatible brick so it's viable and windows as well I've seen lots of well just beautiful restorations of windows that if they those windows were replaced it really would t take away a lot of character on the, mm -hmm. the buildings that I've seen that have been restored um, and I've had windows that needed to be replaced and they stick out like a sore thumb it just completely takes away from the character of the building well, the neighbor to the left is like an example of it. So <laughs> I do think yeah. that the there are some windows that are you know appropriate maybe for replacement um, that we don't have cited in the application. Um, it would be up to us, I guess, to, to decide that. But I, the the rear elevation windows G um, on the third floor, the large the large ones. Can you can you see those anywhere from? Is this a, is this a question? Is it a, a question? Can you point? can you? Well, I guess it'd be a discussion point. Yeah. But if you go to the picture, are those visible from the attic or from anywhere on the building from the ground floor? Yeah. Yeah. Because I took these pictures. Yeah. Okay. So it's those two bays. Got it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I don't have any questions. All right. Um. I guess, I don't know, some clarification. May, maybe this is more discussion, but it's this restroom requirement. I was a little. So did you say that it was accessible? Where is this restroom accessible from? It needs to serve the patio. It's serving the patio, but it's <laughs> on the lower They're considering the patio roof. as an assembly area, which is, requires mm -hmm. a public restroom. But we're. We were trying to argue that with them that's only the four tenants are the only ones that are going to have access to it. Mm -hmm. And each tenant is going to have their own <laughs> restroom. <Yeah. laughs> um, 
And they're okay with the tenants having to go down a flight of stairs to get to the Well, we could put restroom? it, we can still fit it in that third floor. But we, either way, I want to just extend the whole, we'll just widen the whole stairwell to, to fit it inside there. We can build it inside. You won't, from the elevations, you won't tell what's in there. So is there won't be another door. What on is the, the need to if it's on the lower portion of the roof, the second floor, to the right side of this door? Yeah. What is the driver for expanding the whole volume as opposed to just the lower portion? Well, just because we want one continuous box. I mean, we can certainly put another level in it. If it's going to stick up a little bit. The roof will still stick up a little bit higher than the that patio line, so it creates two more lo another roof level. But it could be completely hidden behind what we see yeah. here. Yeah, I mean, from yeah. the front elevation, yeah. you wouldn't tell that that extra roof is there. Yeah. 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 So if if, it's if one that's fine, stories. then we yeah. would develop yeah. it that way. Okay. It's just we haven't gotten to add that bathroom in yet I mean to see the extent yeah. so <laughs> I think we can add that into the motion for for staff approval mm. once we well, see revised guys, drawings you guys can talk about it yeah yeah because yeah. when we submit a new permit revision we can just send the copy yep. to your end <laughs> which that would also include this whatever is approved today too so. Okay, um, well, I'm going to move on to the uh, uh, public hearing. Are there any other uh, members of the public who'd like to speak on this application? Okay. Um, I will now close the public hearing portion of the application. Uh, the applicant may be seated. Thank you. Um, would any commissioners like to make a motion on this application? I move that the commission issue a certificate of appropriateness for the portion of the application at 112 114 West Liberty Street, a contributing building in the Main Street Historic District to replace three modern windows on the third floor front of 114 West Liberty with replicas of the third floor front windows of 112 West Liberty. Restore two contributing front windows, labeled C. Install wood replicas based on matching surviving sashes of one, the third floor lower sash of window E1 on 112 West Liberty, two, the east lower sash of rear window G, and three, the upper sash of rear window H2. Install a new transom above the center front door on the condition that staff approves the design at the building permit level. Install a new wood center front door on the condition that the design is approved by staff and matches historic photos of the building. Remove a non-original wood storefront trim band and repair the underlying bricks or install a new cast stone trim band if staff determines that the bricks cannot be repaired. Tuck point and repair damaged bricks. Construct a new rooftop stair enclosure and deck. Install three new mechanical rooftop units. Install 10 steel bollards along the east elevation of the building in the alley, contingent upon full approval by the City of Ann Arbor and or the Downtown Development Association. Replace a, non, uh, replace a steel non-original door with a matching door on the rear elevation. As conditioned, the work is compatible in exterior design, arrangement, texture, material, and relationship to the rest of the building and the surrounding area and meets the Secretary of Interior standards for rehabilitation and guidelines for rehabilitating historic buildings. In particular, standard 1, 2, 5, 6, 9, and 10 and the Ann Arbor Historic District guidelines. Support. Uh, supported by. Do I need to continue on with the rest of the? Yeah. Okay, well, continue. well, stop. Okay. You got to discuss and take action on okay. this one before you make yep. the other one. Yeah. All right, um, motion carries for Mr. White, seconded by Mr. White. Uh, is there discussion on the motion? There's the, there's the band in there. Yeah. Did I miss it? 
Okay, so yeah. do we? Does anything need to be said about staff? No, it's in there. No, oh, it's in there. Okay, yeah. staff. Yeah. yeah. Okay, sorry. I, just I think sure. staff covered the motion pretty well. All right, well. got it. No, we're good. <laughs> No, there's mention of the rear window. Yeah, my I guess my only discussion would be on the the rear elevation windows. Um, that is a really small alleyway, and those are very very large windows. And I'm surprised that they are intact as much as they are. I didn't get a good look at the pictures. I probably should have walked by um, at some point. Those. Massive ones. Yeah, the massive ones are here. Yeah. We didn't, couldn't really get a good look at them, it seemed like, from the inside. But when you guys were out there, did the wood seem intact? Like, the, with that size of glass, um, when we start doing construction and stuff in there and, and having tenants in there, um, it almost seems like it could be appropriate for those to be replaced. Uh, was similar as opposed to uh, rebuilt and, and reconstructed to me. Um, I don't know what your guys' thoughts are on that. Um, I mean, the from the interior, the because you can't, I can't. You can't yeah, no, I know it's hard to. It's you can't see anything. Really, it was really <laughs> tight in that space with the mechanical yeah. equipment. Yeah. Um, well, that's that's the other thing. It's. Such a that's like what is it six feet between buildings there six yeah, or eight and then, feet. And then you got to go down the alley to get to the back. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how big were those window panes? Like twelve by eighteen each, or are each they like yeah no, thirty are, by twenty four? Uh, each individual. Each light, individual light. Twenty four by thirty six each light. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, I don't. I mean that their ceiling height. The windows, yeah. So. And they go almost to the floor. They're probably 12 inches off the floor. I can't believe those haven't fallen out on somebody. Yeah. And that's the other thing is when it does go to the building department, if that's if they're that low to the ground, they're more likely going to end up having to be replaced with tempered glass. Mm -hmm. um, that's something that you would staff approve at. At permit level, probably. Uh, not if it's if it's if it's just the glass replacement, yeah. But I don't think you're going to be able to replace with tempered glass something with a mutton really that's only a half yeah. an inch wide. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So that's going to pose a problem for him down well, the road. The the building department won't require them to replace the historic glazing. They won't. Okay. No, but it might not be a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, to that's. Do that. Uh, I guess one question. That was the one window yeah. in, in the whole application. Yeah. If they're going to be residential units, that's eh, Can we ask borderline for me. Or can I? Yeah. Uh, Chris, the. Chris, you can come up, please. Yes, yeah, sorry. I should, I should have asked this earlier. Uh, the intent is, and you probably have it spelled out in this multi page application, uh, but is that to be. Infill or a, a new large window to fill that whole opening? They, ideally, if we were to replace that, we'd probably put like three, a triple double hung window in its place. The, like three and the units. full height the of G, the opening? Yeah, like or? the G, yeah. Okay. And so we'd you like to still keep it because it's a master bedroom. Opening. It's a master bedroom that would be there. Be the, Can we see the, the exterior picture? Mm -hmm. Now that is a frame for storm so it's yeah one on massive the, window on the yeah, right kind of the wider and then two what yeah. each window if it was two like, doubles yeah, they'd be pretty large two if, double if it was a windows. double and these windows do have weights and pulleys so they're clearly possibly not original but from the period of significance okay mm -hmm. yeah i mean and my concern is to the unit is going to have to come out of the unit of that Mm -hmm. So we can't just repair. That window's going to have to be pulled all the way out to get that that rooftop or mechanic the make makeup air unit out of that because of, with a lift. Can we? Unless we can crane it out somehow. <laughs> but it's, can we request to go look at it once all that mechanical's out of there? 
Because mm -hmm. that middle suction will is going to have to be cut out. That that middle. Like, you can actually get back to see it, or is it? Yeah, you you can see it. Yeah. They're not going to just. Oh, you can get back there. I thought you couldn't yeah. get even. I mean, get oh, no, the they might be able to. No, no, from the inside. It's a, oh, I mean, yeah. it's, it's a big. Uh, you, it's a huge unit in there. Yeah. It's a full makeup matter. area. It How they got it in there in the first place is. <laughs> I'm sure they built it up there. Yeah, so I mean, it may be kind. Of, maybe they can just keep chopping, chopping it until it's. <laughs> yeah, and the, the other thing is when we were in the alley, it didn't look like um, just trying to estimate the, the age of that window. It didn't look like the brickwork at the masonry opening was that different from, you know, the, the surrounding brickwork. It wasn't obvious that there was toothing in, um, kind of the... It is. The it is weathering. Uh, it of looks like stone, it was put there. It does look like it's. It looks like the two bricks on each side. The opening is there, but it's filled. It's infilled. It's so. infilled. Like almost if there was like a, a small courtyard, at some point there. Or if there was. I mean, a, the lower a, portion clearly. Yeah. The lower yeah. Portion. yeah. You know, maybe that was a, the brick work on the sides. Is yeah, like a drive-in mm -hmm. area. Yeah. yeah. If they if they did. Add that later. They did a good job with that brick toothing. If <laughs> yeah. okay, well, yeah, that's my that was my only question mm -hmm. or you know comment on the application. I think the the motion does pretty much cover everything um, in the application pretty well. Um, any further discussion? So just to point out that you guys have to, or not, address the both the widened doghouse on the roof and whether that's appropriate because it's not what's pr proposed. Mm -hmm. Whether you need to see revised drawings of that before you take action, if you think it's appropriate. And the same goes for this window on the back. If you think it's appropriate to replace the big window G. Does it get put back the way it is now with two large units? Um, it's gonna be really, really difficult to find wood replacement windows that will fill those openings, two of them. And therefore, is a different design all right? Would you wanna see that or can it be staff approved or Maybe all of this is a moot point because you want that window to stay there. Right, so there's, <laughs> there's this window. There's window G and there's the widening oh, of the widening. doghouse. Can we make a motion? Or you can just go with what's presented. Or we can go with that. Yeah. But if, in that case, the doghouse is not in there. The right. expanded doghouse, which he's right. requesting now. Yeah, that, that does concern me a little bit if the building department's asking for it. And I can right. confirm that with them, but I just didn't know that before right now. Yeah. Um, so you can confirm it as is, and uh, you could approve it as is, and I could take it back to the building department and say, well, this is what got approved. It doesn't have a restroom. <laughs> but that might mean that they have to come back again. Yeah, that. Yeah. That, and that seems a little bit... <laughs> Silly, since That's if you silly. expand it to the west, you're not going to see no. any of that expansion well, anyway. Can you can you go back to the the back view? Mm -hmm. So is that a window to the west? Yeah, that's. So is or, that window? Oh, that's one of those. This is this is the this is the boarded in window. Okay, and those are being infilled. Yeah. Correct. Okay, so you, you have plenty of room there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it could double in width, and still, mm -hmm. you know, clear all the mechanical okay. stuff. No, I'm okay amending the I'm motion okay as long as we motion. staff approves the new design. I can, I'm okay with that too. So, do we need to put anyone else support? Okay. So, you know, we'll have to yeah, amend your motion. Portion, yeah. mm -hmm. deck. Um, would you like, after construct a new rooftop stair enclosure and deck, to add comma? After staff approval of building drawings? No, that's yes. fine. After okay. Um, one, I mean, one thing we would like, because these are in being reviewed and being held up until some conclusion happens. I mean, we'd like to mm -hmm. 
to get the permit completed. Well, have you have you drawn them? We haven't. We we need to revise to put these back in. We need yeah. to do these revisions. So what? Right. I guess we're hoping that the next revision we can put in will either get approved without us coming back here right away. That's right. what we were doing. That's what we're doing. Yeah. We're making that work yeah. for you. Yeah. yeah. It's, it seems the windows are all going to need to be restored, though. Kind of so we have the addition for the rooftop for the, that the right, amendment. Do we to make a decision on G or do we want to come back to that window yeah, to discuss it? I I think we we would probably want to change the motion if you guys were agreeable to it or disagreeable. This, is, this, for the this window. window G, the giant yeah. the giant. window G, <laughs> and I understand it is a contributing part of the building and it's historic material. Are we discussing whether it should be two or three? If it should be restored or it could be. Oh, okay, just in general. Okay. So I guess we don't really vote. Well, I'm I'm looking to Commissioners Epperston and Quijano, their thoughts. I you guys were there, and I've heard staffs. Do you guys have anything to add on that specific situation? So I I, I do agree that it's a it's a pretty significant window and its installation and its size. It's pretty. It's very unique. Um, it is in fairly good condition. Um, there. The right lower sash from the interior, or the uh, on the right lower sash on the interior side, one of the muttons has been cut out to install like the wood board or whatever that's blocking the yeah. keeping the um, that glazing closed. But other than that, um, the lead weights are there. I believe they were cut on that same window side, but the rope mm -hmm. is intact, or is is still shown to be there. Um, so that could. It's possible for this window to be repaired okay. um, mm -hmm. very feasibly, and I, I understand the concerns for tempered glazing and, what, and whatnot, especially with it being a residential unit. But I, I do feel that this window is, even though it's in an alley side, that it's this is a significant. Okay, thank you. Contributing to that window. I'm I'm good to go forward. Um, <clears throat> uh, is there uh, any other further discussion, or should we call for a vote? Okay. Um, all those in favor of the motion, please say A. Yeah. Yeah. All those opposed, <laughs> please say no. Uh, the motion um, the motion does carry. Uh, your application has been approved. Oh, wait. Wait. Oops. Wait. There's, there's a ghost in part. Sorry. What did I miss? The, the rest of the, there's another it's motion to cover the rest motion. of the work items. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Okay, on to the next motion. <laughs> um, would anybody like to make an well, additional motion? I mean, you have want to make it just two motions. This yeah. way, if, if we say no on this motion, that defeats this other motion. We, we have, what we have now is we have one motion on the floor, that we and, and we, we approve no. that one. Mm -hmm. And then if we look at this other one, we can say yes or no, up or down with that one. Yeah, we just need somebody to make that second motion. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. But do we approve this first motion? Yes, yeah, you just yes. did. Okay. All yeah. right. I said yeah. I didn't think anybody else. You <laughs> <laughs> just so caught off by the language change there. Oh, Sorry, that's saying. my bad. I was reading. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, sure. make one more motion on okay. this application. Uh, I move that commission deny the portion of the application at 112 and 114 West Liberty Street in the Main Street Historic District to replace six contributing windows on the front of 112 West Liberty, replace nine contributing windows on the alley side of 112 West Liberty, replace four windows on the rear elevation. As proposed, because the windows are repairable and the work is not generally compatible in size, scale, massing, and materials with the building and does not meet the Secretary of Interior's standards for re rehabilitation and guideline, guidelines for rehabilitating historic buildings, in particular Standard 6, and the guidelines for windows and does not meet the Ann Arbor Historic District design guidelines for windows. Um, any discussion on this motion? Is there support? Support. So Is just this right, support. Thank you. <laughs> 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 
get the hang of this. Uh, is there any other? Um, or seconded by Mr. Mr. White. Is there uh, any more discussion on this motion? And if I, if I, if I'm getting myself correctly, I just want to make sure that we're we're voting correctly on this. But we're denying the application. But the motion that we made has been approved. So that motion will also will carry. Okay. The first it's just, motion is done and carried. Okay. This is just the second for motion that is. Okay. It's just the portion that yeah. but I guess did, that denied. includes the windows yes, that weren't the included yeah. in so the first we're portion. Go back. Of right. <laughs> okay. so right. Yes, is that clear? The last vote is to deny. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> I think I did that backwards. I think that was my bad. We should have done that first. Well, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. All right. So, so, uh, so. Yeah. Yeah. all those in favor of the motion, please say yes. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Um, the motion does carry. Uh, your application has been approved and you will receive a written notice from staff. Please note that you must apply for any required permits from the city before beginning your project. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Good job. All right. All right, and um, I guess that. Uh, yep, that concludes our hearings. Uh, we're on to uh, G, new business. Um, staff, do we have uh, any new business? Sure. Um, we have a historic plaque request for 1044 West Liberty Street. Uh, this is nearly opposite Eber White Boulevard. It's a one and three quarter story gable fronter. It first appeared in the 1919 Polk City Directory as the home of Jacob F. and Carolyn Farner. Jacob is listed as an attorney at law and prosecuting attorney. Home features a full width, hip roof front porch with tapered round columns and square lattice skirting, original one over one windows and front door, wood lap siding and shed dormers on the east and west elevations. It's in the National Register Old West Side Historic District. Here's some photos. Um, this is just a lovely house. Uh, it's the, the structure is relatively intact. Uh, it even has its little, little four light windows in the attic on the front and rear gables. It's very compatible with its neighbors. There's a Greek revival next door and then there's uh, more gable fronters going uh, to the east. It's got a nice little shed roofed boxed out bay here on the side. Uh, it's a pretty narrow lot, and it's a pretty narrow house, although it, this looks a little more compressed than it is in real life. <laughs> These screens tend to shrink things. Um, you can see it's got a, a couple of neighbors. They're all similar in massing, um, but slightly different in their window styles and porch designs. It does have a shared driveway going back with um, the Greek Revival next door. Um, and a slightly unfortunate large parking area that's shared back here. Um, but you can see that there is still a backyard. It's, it's fully fenced and um, not so concerned about the limits of pavement behind the house as I am about the historic structure itself. There's a modern shed back here. There's a, there's a very small rear, uh, what well, probably was a, a rear porch that's been enclosed with just some T111. Um, um, doesn't look like superior workmanship. Um, but it also looks like the kind of thing that's extremely reversible, and that's the only addition that was made to this house uh, that I could spot. Uh, so it does meet the criteria for uh, an award. It is more than 50 years old. Uh, it's been maintained over time in its original condition. It does not have historically inappropriate features, enclosures, or repairs, with a slight exception of that one on the back, but you can't even see it anywhere uh, from the street. Uh, and the principal facades visible from the street or right of way maintain their integrity of form, materials, and architectural features. Um, the house is 99 years old. This would be a great 100th birthday present for it. <laughs> and um, its familiarity lends to its charm in this, in this gable fronter. So staff feels that historic plaque is appropriate for the Jacob F. and Carolyn Farner House located at 1044 West Liberty based on the age of the house and the unaltered appearance of the character defining architectural features. There's a sample motion on the second page of the staff report, if you're interested. Uh, thank you, Ms. Thatcher. Um, 
Do you guys have any discussion on this? Or should, is there a uh, commissioner would like to make a motion? I'll make a motion. Um, I move that the 1919 uh, Jacob F. and Carolyn Farmer uh, house at 1044 West Liberty Street meets the criteria for a City of Ann Arbor historic building marker based on its age, historic, and architectural significance and contribution to the history of Ann Arbor. Support. Supported by Commissioner White. Would you like to have a vote? All those in favor, please say yes. 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 All those not in favor, no. And the motion carries. Congratulations. Is that all for unfinished business this week, or is 514 West Madison? No, 514 Madison was just an erroneous report from a couple of years ago that got into your packet. Okay. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. Cool. It was supposed to be 1044 West Liberty. Okay. Um, on to our next agenda item, um, approval of minutes. Uh, staff, we do not have minutes this month. Correct. Okay. Um, I have reports from commissioners. Any reports from commissioners this month? Okay. Uh, We'll move on to J assignments um, for the review committee. Committee uh, Monday, August thirteenth, for the August sixteenth, twenty eighteen uh, regular meeting. So please note everybody that this is a week off schedule. We're okay. a week late because of elections. Okay. We're tying up many city hall rooms. Um, I can be there for the August 13th, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. Can you let me know next week if yes. it won't be? Okay. Yes. I'll put you down. Put me down for now. Next week. Okay. Anybody else? I don't think you should count on me for that meeting. <laughs> okay. It's kind of in the hot zone for potential trip to the hospital, so I don't... <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I was I thinking you, but yeah, yeah no, okay, not me. I get it. I get it. <laughs> yeah. <That's> okay. <laughs> I mean, I just, yeah. Oh, Beeson. Thanks, Beeson. Yeah. Um, if no one else knows that they can do it, I can approach John. But yeah, I will be out of yeah. town that Monday, but I'll be here for the meeting. Okay. Okay. Yeah, unclear on Monday, but okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to say no, Anna. Uh, no. Evan. Okay, I will ask John, and if he can't do it, I'll approach the rest of you again. <laughs> okay. um, all right. Uh, Kay, uh, it's June 2018, HDC staff activities. Any questions, commissioners? A lot of this was stuff you approved at the last, the meeting. last meeting. Yeah, that yeah. first one sounded familiar. There's, it's all pretty standard stuff. Yeah. Um, note to all of you commissioners, won't affect you at all, but the city building department is no longer requiring building permits for roof replacements. But certificates of appropriateness, staff approvals are still required because it's work on the exterior of a house in a historic district, of a building in a historic district. So I expect that there will be some initial confusion with roofers that are just overjoyed that they don't have to get permits, possibly not getting HDC approvals, and we just have to More work with them. The yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah a lot of roof no replacements going on right now. It's hard to over. tell who's. Mm. Yeah. You have to basically write down the address and look it up and track it to see if they've got a certificate of appropriateness. Or if you're concerned about it, just send it to me and I'll look it up. Yeah. 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 You can always just call or email me if, okay. if you're worried about something going on. Okay. All right. Um, on to our next meeting. Concerns of commissioners. Anybody? Any concerns this month? Has there been any follow up on that? Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, has there been any follow up on the. I think it was two meetings, maybe two meetings ago, that, is that a sorority house? 
that we reviewed right on Washina and with the, the trees oh, and the driveway yeah, and the everything. Tree, yeah, yeah, and yeah, the yeah, driveway yeah, yeah. and then there was a lot of discussion about the yes. parking. Yeah. So yeah. that yeah. was approved like by the HTC. Yeah. They they came in with with a site plan application and all of the things that were in the motion that they promised to do, they did. Okay. They moved oh. the entrance to the addition. They didn't oh. touch the yeah, historic right. entrance and wall of the house. I'm not sure which direction it is, kind of northerly. Yeah, um, yeah, so I did go through that when it came in and made sure that they addressed all those things. And they were very good about even calling it out in the application oh, good. that okay. what they did to adhere to the HDC's motion. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was good. Yeah. And that's under review right now. It's not scheduled yet for planning commission, but probably will be in August. <coughs> okay. Um, do we have any various communications to the HDC? Hmm? That's you guys. Oh, we're working session. Okay. Oh, we're working. We have a working session? We have a working session? I just, oh, I just wanted to ask a couple of quick questions. You were in contact with Katie Bowen from over at Oxford. You mentioned a, a working session after this. You're right, I did. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's wrap this one up first. Let's wrap okay. this one up first. Yeah, yeah let's enjoy it. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, there being no more, no further discussion and business without objection, I will adjourn the February 8th, 2018 Ann Arbor Historic uh, District Commission meeting.